Hi. Hello again. We're in the Proclaimer's book on page 51. The subtitle is You Must Leave Her. Get out of her, my people, the Bible long ago warned. Out of what? Babylon the Great, the mother of the harlots and of the disgusting things of the earth. Why get out of Babylon? For her sins have massed together clear up to heaven and God has called her acts of injustice to mind. Who is this mother harlot from whom people should separate themselves? Martin Luther and other leaders of the Reformation identified the Catholic Church and its papacy as Babylon the Great. What about the Protestant churches that sprang up as a result of the Reformation? The fact is, apart from their rejection of the primacy of the Pope, some were not much different from Catholicism in church structure, and they retained unscriptural doctrines such as the Trinity, immortality of the soul, and eternal torment. For this reason, some preachers urge people to break free not only from the Catholic Church, but also from the main Protestant church systems. C.T. Russell and his associates also realized that this infamous harlot was not merely the Catholic Church. Thus, while the Watchtower of November 1879 identified Babylon the Great with the papacy as a system, the article added, We must go further and implicate not the individual members, but the church systems, other churches united to the empires of earth. Every church claiming to be a chaste virgin espoused to Christ, but in reality united to and supported by the world beast. We must condemn, as being in scriptural language, a harlot church. What, therefore, were readers of the Watchtower encouraged to do? Russell wrote, If the church with which you are connected lives in adulterous union with the world, you must, if you would keep your garments white, leave her. Russell and his associates did not then understand the full range of the influence of Babylon the Great. Nevertheless, readers of the Watchtower were urged to separate themselves from church systems that were corrupt and worldly. Hmm. First of all, there's the problem of definitions. You know, mm -hmm. you, you're admitting here that the Reformers had one view and that you kind of inherited a version of that, but then you've changed it since and mm -hmm. expanded the definition. So you, you realize that that's, mm -hmm. that's a real serious problem. If you can't put, get a handle on what the thing is, you're supposed to get out. Yeah. And if, if you go to where the text comes from, Revelation, and you were a reader of Revelation when it was first available to you, you wouldn't be able to say it was a Catholic church. Or world religion at or, all. Yeah, you, you, you have a, a different understanding of what Babylon the Great is. Why should we change it? So what was their understanding at the time? Well, it's very clear if you just read any Revelation commentaries that the consensus is that Babylon was Rome and mm -hmm. the empire that developed from Rome. And it was economic and military, mm -hmm. not primarily religious, although religion flourished, but it was a very... It was a very diverse religion because it, an empire, by its very definition, has to accommodate all kinds of points of view, just like our empires today. So Rome, like Babylon, had Control. a lot of gods. Yeah. So, no, it's not a system. You keep using that word insistently. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and that's where the, this sentence in the middle of paragraph two really goes astray. The fact is, apart from their rejection of the primacy of the Pope, some were not much different from Catholicism. In church structure. Well, that's not true of most of the Protestant churches. Mm -hmm. It's very true of you, though. Yeah, they're, they're more like the Catholic Church. Yeah, Jehovah's this, Witnesses. this hierarchical structure that you take for granted in God's organization is, is not mirrored in the Protestant churches. Yeah, they don't have nearly the control. It's, it's individuals can lead their Christian lives and not be under some rules and and consensus you, we all believe this and you must or else you could be else we could that, that just doesn't exist yeah we could really. wish and we've been in these churches the older churches anyway we could yeah. wish there was more accountability and more structure in the older protestant churches but there isn't yeah. and it's not even true of the roman catholic church today that mm -hmm. is 
go to any of the YouTube channels where you have conservative Catholics and they're criticizing Pope Francis. Yeah. And before that, the, the liberal Catholics were criticizing Pope Benedict. So the structure of the watchtower is much tighter and much more demanding. Yeah. The, the, the Baptists, the Reformed, the Presbyterians, the Brethren, and the, the Methodists, uh, they're, they have very little in the way of accountability outside of their local structures and mm -hmm. dioceses, mm -hmm. if you want to call them dioceses. The Anglicans have a bit more, but not much. Yeah, you were going to mention this last sentence that said, some preachers urged people to break free, not only from the Catholic Church, but also from mainline mm. Protestant church systems. Well, who were these preachers? <laughs> well, most of them developed into full-fledged cults. But <laughs> Russell, an empire built around his person and personality and writings, and then Ellen G. White in Adventism, Joe Smith in Mormonism, and in Christian Science, Mary Baker Eddy. So it's the breakaway groups, the restoration people. That wrap around, they wrap their cult around a single mm -hmm. authority. Yeah. So it's it's just a plain lie that the, the churches of Christendom are kind of one in that they have the doctrines the same. Well, they don't generally. That's why there's denomination. But they mm -hmm. have this much that's the same. So is the this this much, which is the Apostles' Creed, they have that yeah. in common. So is that structure something that would make you it necessary for you to leave? Yeah. So that that calls into question whether or not you sh you must leave the Watchtower. Yeah, this this association of churches generally with those that are united to the empires of the earth. What is more united to the Babylonian system than the Watchtower hierarchy? After all, the Tower of Babel is the s single symbol of Babylon in the days of when it was at its zenith, which is the days of Nebuchadnezzar. And that ziggurat that he built has, is this not great Babylon that I have built. That ziggurat was seven tiered, a pyramid, but a, but a, a mm. pyramid with seven tiers in it. And mm. at the top were the gods, and the gods ran the show, and you didn't question the gods. So when it comes to structure, the mm. cults are far more far more hierarchical yeah. and and leave no room for for doubt or criticism mm -hmm. whereas the, all the churches we've been in and the and the catholics we know have far more leni leniency and and far more uh, i don't think it's a strength but i'll say it anyway that they have far less accountability for mm -hmm. the things they criticize than mm -hmm. people in cults do but a they, non no cult worse than the yeah, watchtower. They have more freedom of conscience of their members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this this empire that they complain about here, and they even capitalize it, the empires of earth. They say the churches are tied to, but who has a bigger empire than the the watchtower bottom tract society or Mormonism? Mm. For, considering the numbers that are, of people that are involved, who has more in mm -hmm. the way of a well, it amounts to now a real estate empire, doesn't it? Yeah. It used to be a publishing empire. So the, the Watchtower at one time was, was criticizing business, <laughs> and yet theirs has become a business. It's, uh, you know, the, it's, it's a publishing business, uh, or, or I don't know, now they've kind of moved to, to uh, a visual empire, but, but it's still... It's, it's, it's hypocritical for them to criticize these things when they exist in their own group. And to take advantage of the, what the governments offer them. Yeah. To say that churches are somehow mixed up with the earth because, because they have either money or, or any kind of power, and yet you've built your whole organization and made it mm. into an empire. Yeah. A financial gaining machine. It's a corporation. Yeah, it's and, it's not a church. Yeah, and yet you will you will uh, you will take advantage of the systems that are are in the government that say you're a religion. Okay, so we'll say we're a religion and we'll get our tax exempts and we'll we'll get some special privileges when it comes to our properties. We'll we'll take advantage of all that, but we'll criticize anyone else who does that. Yeah. So this worldliness they complain about, well, there's nothing Christ talked about more on earth than money, actually. 
Mm -hmm. Mammon is not really the name of a god, but it might as well be because it's the god that most people worship, no matter what religion yeah. they have. And a real estate. You know, when you think of the real estate that the Watchtower has. And we know from our own experience, again, not to mention biographies that we've read, that the churches, the older churches anyway, are not money-driven. In fact, mm -hmm. they give away much of their wealth on the local yeah. level. And they're not... They're not giving to headquarters. They yeah. they basically are giving to the community yeah. and taking care of the needy in the community. Like the last church we were in that had a a, a very a very heavy uh, commitment to Brampton in the Toronto area and to was feeding feeding yeah. the homeless regular every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it was even several days a week, some yeah. parts of the year anyway. Yeah, it was. So then the church before that that we were in for 20 years was giving, I think, away about one-seventh or one-eighth of its total income, which was only a, hundred, a quarter of a million dollars a year. And it was giving away an eighth of that to missions overseas, you know, building yeah. schools and wells. And wells. Digging wells, things like that. So they, they were practical in, in where the money went. And, and most churches that we've been to they're very upfront. You know how much money yep. is there. They have a budget. How, they show you how much money comes in and where the money goes, and you have a say in where the money in goes. In the budget, yeah. And I mean, I mean, a good portion of it goes just to the keep of the building and to the staff. But other than that... Other than that, we give a, most of it away. They give away a lot of the money, yes. And they're very transparent about it. So this is a, what can we say, it's a lie. So if there's any reason to get out of Babylon the Great, it would be that they're not accountable. Cults have that in common, right? They're not accountable outside their own structure, and that structure usually involves the gods at the top. And mm -hmm. no, nowhere is that more apparent than in the Watchtower. Mm -hmm. then, then that last paragraph, I don't know if you wanted to go there now, but the, the last statement that they make, about the tower urging the people to separate from church systems that are corrupt and worldly. <laughs> and they uh, they put as a scripture reference John 18.36. Famous proof text, if you're a witness, my kingdom is no part of this world. So now kingdom is religion? Yeah. You know, so there's just, just use anything. So Christ did not get out of her, the religion that he was in, as corrupt as it was, Judaism, Mm -hmm. He didn't get out of her, and the dis apostles themselves kept right on chugging along until they were thrown out mm -hmm. by their fellow Jews. Yeah. What are our links? We are linking to what is Babylon in Revelation and a video that Franz did that Russell was the watchtower and the mm. FDS. Yeah. But you might ask, or you might think, you must get out of her. Is, does it apply to the Watchtower? Yeah. You must get out of her. I would say yes. Mm -hmm. See you next time.